On our wedding day, we vow to stay together for better or for worse. But how can we overcome hurt and betrayal? Can we learn to trust again? Diana Nepstad, Jeannie Muncy, Rebecca Cruz, and Rhiannon Bell are joining us. Come on, let's talk about it. My marriage was messy almost from the beginning because we both came from, like I said, alcoholic parent, mm -hmm. physical and sexual abuse. And then we found Jesus and we figured we just gonna make it work. Mm -hmm. What I did not know about my husband was that at about 10 years old, he had been exposed to porn mm -hmm. and had had this on again, off again battle with what he did not call an addiction, but really was an addiction to porn. So at some point in the marriage, I noticed he would do things like go to the grocery store and be there too long for the amount of stuff he bought, you know? And I'd be like, what are you doing? Oh, I was reading the music magazines, or I was, you know, I just got caught up doing, doing things. And I can recall we had maybe one conversation about pornography early in the marriage. And he talked about how he would watch it or look at it and threw it away, but he said that was a long time ago. So he wasn't honest about this ongoing problem. So flash forward, we'd been married 20 years, 21 years. And because my husband works in the industry where he travels a lot, he's away a lot, you know, you can be doing anything, really. And since there weren't any rumors coming back to me that there was some girl here or anything like that, I never suspected that he'd ever done anything like be unfaithful or, right. you know, I certainly felt it was possible, but there'd just never been any whispers or anybody right. coming to me. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was just the opposite. When I'd go to the set, everybody talked about what a great guy Terry is, and he loves you so much. He talks about you all the time. And mm -hmm. These little girls be trying to look at him, and he don't pay them no mind. And, you know, I heard stories like that night and day. Love so I just thought, okay, praise the Lord. Well, you better. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, but we went through this season that I call, you know, the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. And God, really what precipitated it was God started to speak to me and had me getting up in the morning to pray, which I did not like. I'm a night owl. <laughs> and God's like, I want you to meet me at 5 a.m. every morning. And I was like, whoa, why? <laughs> and I was like, okay, whatever. So it took me probably a week to be obedient. So I'm down in the living room, five in the morning, no sun. And I'm like, what? Cannot wait until 7 a.m., Lord. Mm. Like, really, like, this is terrible, but that's really how I felt. He said, you're about to go through it. And I was like, what? He said, you're about to go through the valley of the shadow of death. And I said, what's the matter with me, Lord? Am I sick? Am I dying? He said, no, but you'll wish you had. <laughs> I said, what, Lord? And he began to download into my heart these little things that, similar to what you just shared, didn't make sense. Yeah. Little comments that were made. Yeah. Um, who is this person in the phone? Or, you know, just little inconsistencies that maybe I didn't want to see. Mm. But because there wasn't like hard proof, there wasn't like some woman calling me like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm with your man or something silly, yeah. something like right. a soap opera. Mm. Right. I began to challenge my husband and he was away on location. And we had a fight one night and God just started bringing all this stuff up, like, ask him this, ask him this, ask him this. Mm -hmm. And suddenly my husband was like, well, why are you asking me? And da, da, da. and he's very defensive. Mm -hmm. And I finally said to him, and I'm screaming, this, this was so odd because as a Christian, I always thought it was a sin to be angry. So I was never allowing myself to be fully emotional in my marriage. If I was really angry, I would squash it, you know? Mm. But I was yelling at him at the top of my lungs, like this wrath came over me. And I said, what don't I know about you? And he just spit out mm. that he had been addicted to porn. He'd gone to strip clubs and he had been unfaithful. 
And God said to me, kick him out. And I said, okay. I said, we're done. And he started to cry. And he said, he's like, Becky, I told you everything. And I said, yeah, that's good. And now get ready to see your kids on the weekend because I'm done. Because I told you if you ever stepped outside that I would never forgive you, that I would never tolerate it. And I hung up. Mm-hmm. And then I fell on the floor like, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> I said, I've been married 20 years. I have five kids. I haven't worked in 10 years. Mm-hmm. And God just said to me, I will take care of you mm-hmm. like I did before you had a husband. Mm-hmm. And I was wearing this little white robe. And I said, I was like Lazarus in the grave for three days. <laughs> I did not come out of that robe. Yeah. I don't know how my children ate. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they coped mm-hmm. because I don't remember anything but just crying and crying and crying. Mm-hmm. And as we got through maybe a week into that process, the Lord started to speak to me that I should be open to forgiving him. Mm-hmm. And I said, but God, you're the one that told me to kick him out. And he said, Rebecca, I'm going to give you a new man, Mm -hmm. but he'll be the old one reborn. And I said, how can you promise me that? He said, just watch. My life verse since I was 16 has been, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I always felt that if I could get God's opinion on anything, I could just never make another mistake in my life. (laughs) Um, When I went through the crisis with my spouse that uh, resulted in us breaking up, uh, I most definitely was utterly, completely, like flat on my back, dependent on listening to the Holy Spirit. Um, It was the Holy Spirit that prompted me to begin digging around the relationship to see that there were weeds and bad fruit. It was the Holy Spirit that directed me to exit the marriage. And it was the Holy Spirit that directed me how to restore. And I started to hear these songs about healing and restoration in my heart. And even this old Natalie Cole song, I told this story. There's this old song she used to sing I'm keeping a light shining in the window in case he decides to come home. And finally, one day, God said, pick up the phone and call him. And I was like, I don't want to call him. He said, call him. (laughs) And I felt like the Lord snatched me like, now be obedient. Mm -hmm. You are obedient to everything I told you to do up to now. Do what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I need you to take off the wife hat and put on the minister hat. Because I'd been in ministry for like 20 years already at this point, lay ministry, you know, Mm -hmm. serving and praying for people and listening to their problems. And God said, now you, what would you say if this was somebody else's husband? Mm -hmm. What would you say if this was your girlfriend and her husband and he was sorry? Mm -hmm. What would you say? I was like, dang it. (laughs) (laughs) I call my husband and he's crying on the phone. He said, I can't believe you call me. Mm -hmm. And I said, God told me to call you, and he told me to fix you. And I started to sing this song to him by Coldplay. Lights will guide you home, and I will try to fix you. And he just wept, and he said, are you sure? I said, look, he told me to give you one chance, and that's it. And my husband, and it's funny because I tell this backstory because God was already dealing with him long before that phone call to the point where he knew, like God said, if you don't come clean, I'm going to remove my blessing from your Mm -hmm. life. Like this is it. Like your grace is up. Mm -hmm. And my husband, true to his form, really, he genuinely repented. Mm -hmm. He genuinely fell on that rock and allowed his heart to be broken. Mm -hmm. He went to counseling. He went to therapy. He bought a new Bible. He read every men's Bible you could find. Mm -hmm. He went to rehab, like 10 days with total strangers, Mm -hmm. talking about his addiction, and came home a very different person. And I say this to say, had God not been with me, 
I could not have had faith to believe so that we could overcome yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was my do or die. Yeah. Like you can be a jerk, you don't pay your bills on time, you know, you got other problems, but you do that, and I forever am done with you. And so I had to die to my pride to say, that's the unforgivable sin. Mm -hmm. That is unforgivable. God's like, mm, back in your day, you did a little dirt, and I <laughs> forgave you. So show him the same grace. So when there's been hurt in a marriage and um, there is grief as a consequence, so one partner has been hurt, um, it, it takes time to heal. And certainly we cannot expect that if I say sorry, then you should just be fine and we just move on like nothing happened. No, there's actually going to be a process. There are, there's consequences to our actions and, and consequences to our sin. And so there will certainly be a time of grief uh, where there may be a lot of mixed emotions, a lot of anger that, how could you do this to me? Um, there might be a lot of questions about what happened, uh, a lot of fear about what if this happens again, sadness because it's actually grieving almost that loss of the marriage that I thought I had. And so often, especially when there's been infidelity, we talk about starting a second marriage, not with someone else, but it's like as a couple, we actually can't go back to being that couple that we were before this infidelity happened but we're going to actually do the hard work and lean in and we're going to allow ourselves that time to heal, the space to heal if needed, and actually start our marriage afresh if both are committed to that and, and there's been remorse um, and, and forgiveness. And my husband is such an amazing person today. <laughs> I watched him grieve his addiction my husband, who didn't cry or apologize for easily 20 years, mm -hmm. he cried every day mm -hmm. for like three years. He would just get out the bed and come find me. And, no. mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Wow. I'm so sorry I never brought you into my struggle mm -hmm. because we could have fought it together. We could have um, mm -hmm. healed this before it came to this point, and yeah. I'm so ashamed. And he just was so broken and so humble that I didn't recognize him. Mm. I didn't. It was truly a miraculous work of Praise God, God. Wow. to live with someone for 20 years and to really believe from the depths of your soul mm. that they are never going to change. Yeah. And to watch him just like the blob, just yeah. like become this whole other person in front of my eyes. That's what the Holy Spirit can do, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. I think that he said something that's really, really beautiful, and that is he brought me into his struggle, mm. which I yes. think in relationships, if if we can walk humbly before one another and really trust one another and to be able to let someone see our vulnerability and see our struggle, because we have great ability to comfort mm -hmm. and to help mm -hmm. in the right way when we allow somebody to see our struggle. And in a relationship, a mm -hmm. uh, husband and wife relationship, I think it's really, really important. If you cannot be vulnerable with the other individual, I think you'll have a lot, a lot of challenges. I mean, you face enough challenges on your own, but I think sharing, being able to share your struggle is crucial. And if you're able to share your struggle, then the other person can be compassionate towards. I think oftentimes we're not compassionate towards one another and we're, we don't feel like we can share ourselves. And if you're that way, there's a chance that you don't trust that other individual with your heart. You've got to get past that. So to me, that's really, really important. And when someone shares their struggle with you, you've got to hold it to your heart because they've opened themselves up to you. And to his credit, my husband allowed me to grieve. Mm -hmm. He allowed me to get angry. He allowed me to have moments that I vented how I felt and that I hate you right now. Mm -hmm. And he would just hug me. No. He would just say, I don't care if we're miserable together, we're staying together. Yeah. I mean, he would say yeah. that yeah. because he's so, and I have to tell you, my self-worth wasn't as high as it should have been. Yeah. So I was convinced 
that nobody would ever fight for me like that. Mm. Wow. And when my spouse fought for me like that, mm -hmm. it really changed the way I saw myself wow. yeah. and, and enhanced our marriage yeah. mm. and, and gave me a real picture of God's redemptive power. Yes. Mm. Because that was my impossible. Yeah. Mm. It really, I was determined to live the rest of my life with a man that I could barely tolerate because mm. he was angry and he was vengeful and he was morose and he was driven. Mm. And I just had to find my happiness in God and find my happiness in my kids and my church and my life mm. that I'd built without him. Mm. Yeah. Because he was all about his addiction mm. and his dreams. And I now really have a family. Mm -hmm. I really have a family with my husband. Yeah. He's redeeming the time. He's building up his children. He's mentoring our son. Mm -hmm. Like all those things that I used to go, you know, those Christian books says that you should be doing this. You, know? <laughs> you read that, didn't you? <laughs> yes. And, wow, and that's um, I say, why did it take 20 years, Lord? But God knows how we're wired and how we're made. Yeah. And for whatever reason, that was the, the do or die yeah. day for my husband. We call it D-Day, mm. you know, that he really came back to his true self, mm. back to his father, God, and back to living openly and humbly and mm. unafraid. And the thing he said to me the most that is impactful is he said, I always believed, because I told him if he ever cheated, I'd leave him. He said, I always believed that if Rebecca saw me the way I really was, she would never accept me. Mm. And he said, the way that you loved me, in spite of what I had done, completely changed me. Mm. And that's the cross. Yeah. 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 That's the message of Jesus. You yeah, lived it. It's, yeah. You lived it, you know, outside looking in. It's like these are the stories that, that build the kingdom. Mm. Yeah. Yes. It's not... I, I think it's the, the misnomer of even in either a church life, kingdom life, being a yeah. Christian, a believer, a follower of Jesus. We have this preconceived notion of that our lives are removed from pain. Mm -hmm. But the thing yeah. is, we get, to, we get the privilege yes. of now walking a life, a real life, mm -hmm. with the people that we decide to do life with right. and, and to live a real life. If you have the blessing of sticking it through, you're going to see an aged love, a pure love, a love that can weather through stuff, a partner in crime that will be there through thick and thin, that will love you through the cancer diagnosis or the mastectomy, that will love you through when you've lost your, your mom or dad, um, when you're caring for elderly parents. It's, it's that person that walks you through it. One that changes the diapers. My husband changed 16 diapers a day. That's what a real marriage is, as I was going through my postpartum depression. You know, that's, that's what real marriage looks like. A real marriage, what it is. And so, to have a pain-free world, I, I hate to burst your bubble, but it's not true. Um, but I'll tell you this, if you stick it through, you're gonna have a blessed love a, a God-centered marriage that you'll be proud of. We treat people like as disposables. Like yes. Yes. we kind of, you know, you've wronged me, you're out of my life. Mm -hmm. And that was the culture I lived in. So, similar culture as far as like, you don't forgive people if they've wronged right. you, they've been blacklisted, you know, that kind of thing. Right. That mm -hmm. was the culture that I lived in. But to come into the kingdom with a whole new kingdom principle, but the rules, laws, regulations, it was a whole di totally different life than the life that I was raised in. Mm -hmm. So to see your story and to see how God yes. used you, mm -hmm. how both you and your husband are, are even serving, you know, the Lord's purposes in your individual lives, that's powerful. Yeah. That's, the, that's the message of Jesus. Yeah. It's like, go talk to Rebecca. Right. She'll yeah. tell you the whole <laughs> yeah. gospel in a yeah. nutshell. Yeah. This is what it's like. And I tell you the spirit of the Lord, and thank you for your words. But the Spirit of the Lord really challenged me. He said, do you believe the gospel or not? Mm -hmm. I was like, dang, Lord. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you gotta... yeah. I mean, it was like 
like the one thing, mm. don't ever tell God what you won't do. Mm. <laughs> because right. I would have never thought that I could endure that. Mm. Because when you forgive, you really are allowing yourself to take their hurt and not yeah. pull it back. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. not retaliate. You, you cling to the cross and you take the pain. Mm. You take it. And then hopefully, you know, you turn it over to God and God takes the pain. You know, sometimes marriage is super messy and sometimes super messy is happening right next door or maybe to a sister or a friend. Um, I think love and support, there's probably a time or two with, that I might have not supported something, you know, and just thought, you know what, you need to just let that go. <laughs> and, and and to this day, there is a, a one, uh, one marriage in particular that didn't go well uh, in our family. And um, I wish I would have been a little more supportive in that. I look back now and um, I think just 2020 hindsight, um, wish that I would have encouraged just a little more instead of going, I oh, beat it. <laughs> um, so I think we just have to be real careful what we say to people going through stuff. I think we need to encourage them in the Lord as much as possible. Um, because, you know, marriage is worth fighting for. Maybe not everybody has the same ending that you do. Because right. marriage mm -hmm. is just messy yes. at mm. times. Um, but you set an example that people, y y uh, couples that are going through it, that are struggling with so many different things that says, you know, they walk through hell mm. and they kept walking. Mm and they've come through and they walk in humility, they walk in forgiveness towards one another, they walk in love, but it's a process. It was a process for you. And so, yes. but your example allows other people to say, the pain of my suffering and how I feel, I can get through this. And there is a good resolve and there is a happy ending as it were, yeah. you know. I'm still a believer in happy endings. Yeah. 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 <laughs> If I didn't forgive Phil, I would just be a total wreck. I would be bittered, embittered. I would be hateful. And forgiveness is more about, in our marriage for me, forgiveness is about me. And if I don't forgive, then I can't walk freely in my life. So forgiveness is not as much about them as it is about the person that needs to do the forgiving. If I want to be free and happy and joyful, I got to find a way to forgive. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they stepped into the fire, the fire was their friend. Mm -hmm. And the fire broke off all the bondages. Mm -hmm. And in the fire is where Jesus stood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yes. so that they could see the glory of God. Yes. And that's what you've provided for a whole lot of people. Yes. So well done. For it. Well You're amazing. Done. Glory girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheers to you. So <laughs> my scars. Yes. I love it. Yes. And love cheers it. to him. Yeah. Yes. 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 Because yes. cheers. Love you, T Money. <laughs> because yeah. he made yeah. a choice. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. had he not, we would have had a different ending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I can't say that everybody, I've met people that, yeah. you know, are like, I wish my story had turned out that sure. way. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm thankful, yeah. I'm very mm -hmm. thankful mm -hmm. to God, to my spouse, that between me, him, and God, we, we fought for this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to say, first of all, that life can be unfair. It really, really can. Life can hit you. Uh, my friend Tim Story says, life can knock your chonies off. <laughs> and we've all had it happen. But I want to say to you that God is not overwhelmed by your problem. Uh, he's been here a long time and he has seen it and done it all. And he's already got an answer for you. It may take a while for you to see that answer it may take time to, to heal, to overcome, but God wants you to know that he has not abandoned you, that he is not only with you, but he is already several steps ahead 
waiting for you to come and join him on this journey of walking out your for better or worse right now. So I'm going to pray for you if you're watching. Please um, bow your heads. And um, Father, I just thank you. I thank you for this precious couple that is walking through infidelity right now. I thank you that their hearts are broken, God, but they are not broken beyond repair of what you can do. And I ask you, Jesus, to search their hearts and to find a way to mend the broken pieces of their lives and put their family back together in Jesus' name. I ask you, Lord, for a woman who's going through a trial of divorce, whose marriage did not end with a happily ever after, whose marriage is not the stuff of prayers and dreams, but has been nothing but a nightmare. God, I ask you to forgive her for doubting you and to show you that she will put her trust in you again, that she will lean not to her own ways anymore and will know that you certainly have a plan for her to take her to a higher place, to give her the hope and the future that she dreams of and that you will fulfill the desire of every living thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.